يا إله الكون قد أسلمت لك يا إله الكون قد أسلمت لك يا إله الكون قد أسلمت لك رب فاغفر زلتي ما أحكمك أبتغيها مدحة طاغية تبهر البدر بليل يريدون ليطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم والله متن إن الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على سيد المصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن ولا فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أيها الأخوة الكرام وأخوات السيدات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. To our respected non-Muslim guests, we ask that your your hearts and your minds be opened and accessible uh, to this message and to this proposition. Before proceeding, I'd like to just reiterate a couple of things that my brother related. Number one, we Muslims should keep in mind that the most important tool for propagating Islam or for disseminating the Islamic message, the most important tool is character, behavior. So it doesn't matter what we say, it doesn't matter about the pamphlets and the books and the lectures, that's not important, that's not the main tool. The main tool is your behavior. And if you don't behave right, if your character is incorrect, then you are blocking the way. You're giving the wrong message. And in many cases, the Muslim neighbor, the Muslim co-worker, the Muslim colleague, they are the ones that are blocking the way for people understanding Islam because people are getting confused. They are confusing Muslims with Islam and part of us uncovering the treasure sometimes means moving Muslims out of the way so we need to while we have this opportunity and this responsibility we need to be on the best behavior now I want to remind the people here that I'm not an entertainer. I didn't come here to entertain the Muslims. And I didn't come here to entertain the other people that came here. 
I'm not Michael Jackson and this is not Thriller. Now, as we mentioned last night, this is serious business. We are attempting to convey serious information. Information that in some cases causes an individual to make a choice to change, alter their orientation in life. And that's serious. So we Muslims, we have to be very careful. So that when it comes time for a person to ask a question, when that question is asked, I am trying my best to respond to it in a dignified way. And I have to use my discretion how to do so in the most respectful, dignified, effective way. But when the answer comes or the question comes, there shouldn't be any responses from the Muslims. You don't need to clap, you don't need to tack beer, you don't need to laugh because that's incorrect behavior. Let's just allow a person to ask their question how silly it might sound to us and let me respond how effective or not effective as it might appear but we Muslims just hold on to our behavior some of the most valuable things in this world are deep inside the earth and in order for us to acquire them these things have to be mined. They have to be extracted. Things like diamonds, gold, oil, and precious jewels must be discovered. And then they must be uncovered and extracted for our use. And even after extracting these valuable things from the earth or from the water, we must then subject them to refinement before we can use them. Even after extracting these valuable things from the earth or from the water, we must then subject them to refinement before we can use them. Yet these are just materials, things, and objects that have a transitory value and utility. The most valuable and important resources that we human beings possess are inside of us such as our brains which allow us to think our eyes that allow us to see our tongue that allows us to speak our lungs that allow us to breathe our hearts which, a, which it stopped if it were stopped beating, we would die immediately. Our kidneys that purify the body, our stomachs, our hands, our feet, our nervous system, our skeletal system, our respiratory system, our digestive system, our cerebral system, all of this which we have been given for free. Outside of us, we also have ecosystems 
the ecosystems of the earth, the oceans, the rivers, the mountains, the valleys, the deserts and the jungles, the wind and the rain, the solar and lunar influences, the geography and the topography of the earth. All of this we have been given without asking. Then there's the animal kingdom, the insects, the birds, the fish, the bacteria, the microscopic life systems that are hidden from us. Hidden from us and the world of germs and microbes that affect us. All of this we have been given without asking. In the outer space there is our solar system, our galaxy, clusters of galaxies, nebula of clusters, and literally billions of galaxies in outer space, some of which are 700,000 billion light years away. All of this we have been given without asking. The phenomena of all of this is the fact that it is all organized in such a way that it can be studied, manipulated, and utilized for us human beings to benefit from, for us human beings to control much of the environment which is around us. And all of this we have been given without asking. Now returning back to the subject of human beings, there is still yet another aspect of our psychology that distinguishes us from all other creatures. This is the entity which is called the intellect. Because of our intellectual capacity, we can calculate, control, manipulate, study, research, compute, measure, understand, perceive, plan, determine, dictate, organize, execute and administrate nearly everything in our environment. And all of this we have been given without asking. Because of intellectual capacity, we human beings have inherited a tremendous responsibility a responsibility of moral leadership. Leadership of everything and everyone that is on this planet. Leadership of everything and everyone which surrounds this planet. And all of this we have been given without asking. We are responsible for our families, our communities, our societies, our governments, and inevitably, we are responsible for the international community. But our most direct responsibility is over ourselves. And this too, we have been given without asking. In our attempt to understand the world, we as individuals often forget ourselves.
we also do not consider how we got to this world and that we only have a limited period of time in this world and finally we may not have reconciled within that period of time the issue of death the issue of death which is a certainty and what will definitely happen after here he said that verily you should know that the life of this world is but sport and amusement and the competition between human beings for the piling up of and the development of and possession of material things children wives and husbands well-tilled land houses of which you delight commerce businesses but the life of this world is better And it would be better if we human beings were to compete with one another for the forgiveness and mercy of our Lord. And that would be better in our interests. The answers to the most important questions remain hidden and unanswered for us. Therefore, the meaning and the objective of life also remains hidden. This is a key to the treasure. That is why we need tools to accomplish our aims. And that is why we need education to understand different systems within life. This is a key to the treasure. There are things that we can learn in the classroom and there are things that we can learn from experience. But the most powerful lessons are those that are learned from inspiration. This is a key to the treasure. Inspiration is not a commodity. Inspiration is not something that we should take for granted. Therefore, inspiration is not readily available and easily accessible to everyone. Inspiration is something that we have to work, look for, to obtain. Inspiration is special, and inspiration is rare. Inspiration is sacred and inspiration is precious and we have to seize the opportunity like diamonds gold and precious metals inspiration must be looked for 
discovered and then extracted. Inspiration is one of the treasures of this world that needs to be discovered and then needs to be uncovered. We have to seize the opportunity to acquire inspiration when it comes. Prophets, messengers, peace be upon all of them, and those following them have been pointing to this treasure throughout the period of man's existence on this planet. But most human beings do not want to listen. Most human beings do not pay attention. We have to seize the opportunity when it comes. The creator of this world has sent this treasure of inspiration to us in the form of revelation and in the form of legislation. Not a revelation that I deliver to you or that you deliver to someone else, but a divine revelation. Not a legislation that is imposed upon us by a government, by a constitution, but a divine legislation. And it's our choice to decide whether we want to follow that revelation, whether we want to accept that inspiration, whether we want to conform to that legislation. Every prophet and every messenger, peace be upon all of them, brought a stage of that inspiration, a stage of that revelation, and a stage of that divine legislation. They brought such inspiration and revelation and, regis and legislation to the human beings of that time and that place under those conditions which they came. It's our choice to decide whether we want to accept that inspiration, that revelation, and that legislation. The last and final prophet and messenger, peace be upon him, to the human beings, his name is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. Peace and blessings of Almighty God be upon him. And he has been given the perfected and preserved inspiration and divine revelation, which the world today is divinely, which for the world today is the divinely ordained legislation for the whole of the world, wherever the human beings reside. But it's our choice to decide whether we want to accept or conform to that final inspiration, revelation, and legislation. It's up to us whether we want to accept this treasure. And this treasure is called Islam. Now the word Islam in the Arabic language has a specific meaning. It has
has a literary meaning. It also has a spiritual meaning. The literary meaning of Islam is submission, surrender, acceptance, conformance. It means submission, surrender, acceptance, and conformance to what the Creator has legislated for the human beings. Now some people may refer to this treasure, Islam, as a religion. And others may call this treasure a way of life. In fact, it is a complete and thorough system that covers every aspect of what we call life. But it's our choice whether we want to accept this treasure. It's our choice whether we want to accept this system of life. Islam is a system of full submission. Submission to whom? The creator of the heavens and the earth. Islam is a system which has and which means and which requires absolute adherence to monotheism. And what does that mean, monotheism? It means recognizing, conforming, and worshiping absolutely one God, one creator, one sovereign for this whole world. It means giving up what we think, giving up our opinions, giving up our feelings, giving up our inclinations, surrendering our personal choices and preferring the submission and the surrender to Almighty God. It means understanding, listening, responding to the Word of God and after that, obeying. Because what good would it be for a person to say, I hear, I know, I understand, but after that, they disobey and they rebel. In our society, the person that understands the law hears, understands, acknowledges the law and the rules, but doesn't obey and rebels. They find themselves in court. They find themselves under indictment. They find themselves under judgment. And in many cases, they find themselves under punishment. Because when we understand that there's a constitution, when we understand that there is a law, when we understand there is a system, when we understand that there is legislation, it requires obedience. But in the former case, it's obedience to other human beings. In this case, it's obedience to the creator of the heavens and the earth. It also includes rejecting and avoiding every kind of immorality and corruption, every kind of paganism and polytheism, and every avenue and branch connected to immorality, corruption, paganism, and polytheism. This is what Islam 
means and to capture the treasure to uncover the treasure one has to accept that definition Islam is a belief system a belief system that those who follow it who subscribe to it who call themselves Muslims we say we believe in Almighty God absolutely we believe in his prophets and messengers absolutely we believe in all the books that were sent revealed to those prophets and messengers we believe in the angels that were created as intermediaries angels that were created to perform specific jobs we believe in them because they are mentioned we believe in the day of judgment we believe that a time will come when everyone will see the evidence of what they have done in this short period of time that we call the life of a human being we believe that everything has been measured everything has been decreed not a leaf falls from a tree not a drop of rain falls from the sky not a child is born nor a child aborted not a human being lives not a human being dies but it has already been written we believe in the resurrection after death because we see every season how the earth becomes barren no leaves no trees no vegetation and then we see the rain comes in the spring and we see the grass come back the leaves come back the flowers come back the vegetation comes back we see the rejuvenation of the earth and the one that is able to do that is able to rejuvenate and give us back life after we are dead Islam is a system of worship because worship means prescribed actions it's not enough for a person simply to say I believe without actions everyone expects from another one the fulfillment of contracts a man and a woman get married and they have entered a contract of faith but that's not enough they are looking to see the fulfillment through actions all of us sign contracts to enter employment to get education and we have faith that we're going to complete it but that's not enough you have to study in order to graduate and you got to work and get the work every day in order to get paid why because faith without actions is not enough so Islam as a system of worship is how we fulfill what we say we believe therefore every Muslim makes the statement that there's none to be worshipped except the Creator one and absolutely and every Muslim makes the statement the acknowledgement that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and that is the first act of worship every Muslim accepts the responsibility 
of praying five times a day. Now you might say to yourself, now that's a little bit extreme. Why would God need us to pray five times a day? Well, first of all, our prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said something very simple. He said that if any one of you had a stream or a river in front of their house and you went down to it and bathed in it or swam in it five times a day, would there be any dirt on you? The answer, the prayer for us is like that stream. It doesn't mean that a Muslim doesn't make mistakes or commit sins or go in error. It doesn't mean that, but it means that if they pray five times a day, if they return back to that stream and that prayer five times a day, there will be less chance of sin, corruption, and error. We Muslims accept the responsibility of zakat, taking a portion of what we earn, taking a portion of what we save. And that portion that remains, that we do not consume, we pay a portion of that to those who are less fortunate than we are. That's a social responsibility. It's called zakah. It is the third act of worship. We Muslims fast. We accept the responsibility of fasting during the month of Ramadan, which is the ninth month of the lunar calendar. We didn't determine to fast during Ramadan. We were ordered to fast during Ramadan and we accept it. Because this is the month that the Quran was revealed. And this is the month that we recite the Quran more than any other month. It is the month that we spend more in charity than any other month. It is the month that we pray more than any other month. And through doing so, we develop self-control and discipline. It's a month of blessings. It's a month of discipline. And it is the fourth act of worship. And we Muslims accept the responsibility of going to Mecca, a city which is in the desert, in the Arabian Peninsula. And we don't go there on vacation. We don't go there to sun and fun and relax and have a good time. No, we go there because Abraham was ordered by God, peace be upon him, to build a house of worship there. And after he finished building that house of worship with his son Ismail, peace be upon both of them, that house was built in the shape of a cube and that's why in Arabic it's called Kaaba. It is called Kaaba. And so all the people of Abraham, all the people of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all the people of monotheistic belief have been ordered once in their life, go to that city and go around that house. It is not a house which God lives in, because God doesn't live, cannot live in any house. God cannot be restricted to a house. But it is the house of God, because God told Abraham to build it. And the human beings come from every place in the earth of all colors, backgrounds, classes and they go around that house asking for God for 
forgiveness and mercy and praising that God of Abraham. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, he taught us and he ordered us to complete that tradition of Abraham and to go to Mecca once in our life and that is the fifth act of worship. Now this belief system and this system of worship that is not all of what Islam this treasure is because if that were the case it would be quite easy for all of us to fulfill and capture the treasure but that's not all it is all of those things prepare us give us the development it prepares us to do the other things which is the purpose of us being Muslim and this is how we are able to show the treasure to others this belief system and this system of worship is there to develop and refine our character so that a real Muslim a sincere Muslim has character that prevents them from lying, cheating, stealing, fornicating, adultery, bearing false witness, slandering, libeling, cursing, drinking, drugging, deceiving, because all of those are the ills of the character. This system of worship and this belief system develops for us the idea of morality. And what is morality? Spike Lee said, do the right thing. That's what morality is. Morality is following the rules, doing the right thing at the right time, at the right place for everybody, being upright in your conduct. Morality towards God, morality towards the human beings, morality towards yourself, being clean, being decent, being dignified, that's morality. This belief system and this system of worship teaches us tolerance for other human beings. Now what is tolerance? It means my ability to be patient and understand and bear with other people's ideas, other people's lifestyles, other people's persuasions, and even when they disrespect me even when they abuse me still I should have a certain amount of tolerance this system of worship and this belief system teaches us to have equity equity means seeing everybody else just like I am looking at another man looking at another woman, another human being, just like I am. Offering them respect, just like I want it. Equity, dealing in fairness, not cheating, not deceiving, being equitable. Removing prejudice, removing preconditioning, removing hatred, enmity, equity. This belief system and this system of worship should develop inside of us moderation. Now what is moderation? Moderation means even taking the middle course even in the things that are good. You know, too much money is no good. Too much food is gluttony. Too many
many clothes, too many cars, too much desires, too much of the good things is still no good. This system teaches us to enjoy life with moderation. Take the middle course. This belief system and system of worship teaches us, breeds inside of us a sense of dignity. And dignity is the crown of the character. When you got dignity, when you walk into a room, people know that you're dignified. How you speak, how you act, how you sit, how you address people. That you have the ability to distinguish old people from young people. You know how to talk to educated people. You know how to talk to people in the street. And all of them can see and witness your dignity. Dignity is something that other people see in you. Not something that you necessarily see in yourself. This belief system and system of worship teaches us to cooperate with other believers and to cooperate with other human beings in doing what is good to accomplish the aim of life. This belief system and system of worship teaches us respect for ourselves, respect for all other human beings. This belief system teaches us justice. Justice means balance. Justice means what is right, what is fair. Justice, not just us, but justice. This system of worship and this belief system teaches us progress. It promises us progress. And what is progress? Progress is not technology and progress is not science. Progress is when you move towards earning the mercy, the forgiveness, the nearness towards your Lord. When you upgrade yourself in character, this is when civilization, this is when the human being is making progress. This belief system and this system of worship leads us to success. It is not a success in a material sense. It is not a success in the sense of popularity. It's a success which means having a wholesome, complete, comprehensive, clean, beautiful, balanced, character, demeanor in the sight of God. That is real success. I want my brother to recite from the Quran because the Quran has pointed this out to us in a special surah which is called Furqan. Can you read those last from 61 to 72, brother, please? Uh, brother, if you'll recite it uh, verse by verse, uh, what I'll do is after you recite one verse, then I'll translate for them like that. That verse it says, Blessed is he, Almighty God, 
who provided us with the constellations which contains the sun as a blazing light and also contains the moon with a light which is reflected. مرة ثانية حبيبي مرة ثانية إن شاء الله وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة خلفة لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا It is he who caused the night and the day to be in succession of one another in order that those who might have the will to be grateful could be grateful. And the servants of the Creator, who is Ar-Rahman, the Most Merciful. The servants of the Most Merciful are those who walk on the earth in humility, not arrogantly. And even when ignorant people address them, they say to them a word of peace. And they are those who are constantly, on a regular basis, making ibadah, worshiping their Lord in prostration and standing in different positions. Are those who ask the Creator, O oh my Lord, please cause us to pass over, cause us to avoid the hellfire, the punishment of the hellfire. Surely it is a punishment that is humiliating for those who are unfortunate to go there. Definitely, it is an hour of judgment that is of no doubt which everyone will have to endure. And there are those that when they spend, they are not excessive, but they are moderate. They don't go to the extreme in giving, and they don't go to the extreme in holding. But they observe the middle path between those two extremes. Well, 
and they are those who do not call upon they do not recognize they do not conform to they do not obey or submit to anyone along with their Lord And they are those who do not take the life of any human being except by virtue of and justification of divine legislation, which is the truth. They do not take the life of anyone except by virtue of the truth supported by divine legislation. And they are not of those people that fornicate or commit adultery. And surely those people that engage in fornication and adultery, this is a destruction and a corruption for them. They are those Maratani Habibi. And they are those who avoid the punishment on the day of judgment, verily that punishment itself is unbearable. <laughs> Except those people who repent, and after they repent, they do right actions based upon belief and as for them who repent and do good actions according to belief their Lord will exchange the worst of their deeds for good ones And surely Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. And whoever repents and does good actions, Certainly, his or her repentance will be accepted by God as a pure repentance. And people who themselves, they don't say words of slander. And when they pass by futility, foolishness, they pass by it with nobility and tolerance. And there are those who when they hear the verses of their Lord Rehearsed, they do not droop down. They are not disinterested in it. They don't disregard it, but they are attentive towards it.
They don't respond to it as the deaf and the dumb. Dear brothers and sisters in faith and respected guests, those verses were recited because I wanted to give full support of the characteristics that I spoke to you about of which Islam as a belief system and Islam as a system of worship, what it cultivates. I said that it cultivates a system of values, character, morality, tolerance, equity, moderation, dignity, cooperation, respect, justice, progress, success. My respected non-Muslims, guests, we have done our best to uncover the treasure of Islam for you. We have done our best to identify this treasure for you. You are invited to inherit this treasure by being a Muslim. And you may ask, why do I have to be a Muslim to inherit this treasure? Because all those that brought this treasure to the world were Muslims. And all those that followed and inherited this treasure were Muslims. Abraham was a Muslim, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, because he submitted to his Lord. Moses was a Muslim because he submitted to his Lord. Solomon and David, peace be upon both of them, were Muslims because to be Muslim means they submitted to their Lord. John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, they were both Muslims because they submitted towards their Lord. The prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was a Muslim because he submitted towards his Lord. You too should be Muslim by submitting to your Lord, by testifying, by submitting and surrendering yourself to your Lord and Creator. This is how you will uncover and capture the treasure. I ask now at this time, and I ask the, um, the organizers, can they cut the lights on here? I ask at this time, now that the, the treasure is open and plain and clear and uncovered for anyone to see, I ask, are there any non-Muslims here tonight that would like to inherit this treasure? Is there anyone, any non-Muslims that would like to come forward, either come forward or stand up where you are and accept this treasure of Islam in their life? If there are any non-Muslims that would like to accept this treasure. Just come right here, brother. Now, 
I'm sure that there are several people who are sitting in their chairs and they're hesitant to come forward because they don't know what their family is going to think. They don't know what their husband or wife might think. They don't know what they're going to tell their friends, what they're going to tell their co-workers that they came to a lecture and some guy just brainwashed them. But we shouldn't think that way. We need to seize the opportunity when the opportunity comes. And we need to be courageous. If you're in the middle of a lake or an ocean and you run out of, you run out of options, you can't swim, you can't stay afloat, if anyone just throws a rope out to you, even if you were to see a straw floating, you would grab at it because that's human nature. Here we're not asking anybody to act out of desperation. We're inviting you and we are suggesting to you that you accept Islam and that you accept this treasure into your life as these five individuals are about to do now. So while I recite the words of the Shahada, if there are anybody else, if there's anyone else, if you don't want to come forward, then just recite it along with us. Or stand up where you are and you can recite it with us. Or if you feel like it, you come forward while we're reciting it. Now, there are people who are related to Muslims. There are... There are young ladies who have... an intended relationship with Muslims. There are young men who are here who go to school with young Muslim ladies and they would like to maybe marry one of them or have a relationship with one of them, but they can't because they're not Muslim. And we live in a real world. And so there are non-Muslims who are the neighbors of Muslims, who go to school with Muslims and work with Muslims. And basically, you already have accepted most of what you see. You've accepted most of what you have heard. Well, this is an opportunity for you to embrace it and take it another step further. The words that we're going to recite is nothing more than what I've already said. It is the bearing of witness that there's none to be worshipped except Almighty God and that he is one and without any partner, and the bearing of witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Do you accept it? So, I want you to recite these words after me. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasul lullah I mean
doing all the things that you and I do and at night standing in prayer for four or five hours at a time and in the day fighting the battles discharging the armies giving the ahkam and the rulings explaining the Quran instructing the people in behavior how could a man do all of that and stand four or five hours at night at one time what kind of human being could that be? Let me tell you, after Christopher Columbus came back and claimed that land for King Ferdinand and Isabella, they sent more ships. And within 150 years, they destabilized massacred, killed, liquidated, eliminated 89 million native Indians, as they called them, to take control of what they call the new world. So we got 56 and we got 89. You keep adding for me, please. How many? 487 million. That's half a billion people. They never defined any of these actions, any of these barbaric, tragic intrusions, criminal occupations, destabilizations, murder, and protracted crimes on humanity. They never called it what? Terrorism. It's unbelievable how a concept could be forced on the world with their eyes wide open and all the lives, all the time that people go to church, read the Bible, talk to their priests, their leaders, themselves, around the dinner table, pray to God with their eyes open or closed and don't understand the Trinity and they accept it that it's simply a mystery that cannot be explained. The Islamic position regarding that is that generally, generally, the role of men is to protect. Generally. To represent, to protect outwardly. Just like you have never in history heard of an army, uh, I mean a country, going to war against another country and they sent a female regiment. <laughs> it has never happened. And there's a reason for that. With all the liberation that's gone on, uh, America didn't send no female regiment. Because generally speaking, answering the lady's question, they are equal in front of God, but they are not the same. You see, if a little rat ran across here right now, what would <laughs> if, 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 if it was a man, he, <laughs> it's right, right along. And they just got finished praying the morning prayer. So they start planning this bank robbery. <laughs> or they call up the lady, or the lady call up the man. They want to meet together. So I said, where should we meet? Oh, well, let's meet after lunch. Well, lunch time is door time, not prayer time. <laughs> so, but she said, well, before we go have this, this little meeting that we're going to have, let's pray door first. Pray that. <laughs> so, okay, we pray. So then we had a meeting together. So where are we going from here? Well, we should go to your house or my house. Well, we got to pray, we got to pray that afternoon prayer now. <laughs> so we pray the afternoon prayer. So where are we going? We'll meet at your house. So we, what we're going to do, we take a little drink and we start getting smooching or whatever. So, oh, well, it's, a, it's a sunset prayer. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. So the whole issue of the prayer, the Prophet, the, the Quran says, Inna salata tanha an fahsha wal munkar. Is this correct? Verily the prayer is a preventive deterrent against human tendencies towards doing what's wrong.
And one day she wake up and she puts on niqab and she puts her full clothes on no more lipstick no more perfume she doesn't talk to the men she's not working anymore because she understands to keep her higher to keep herself she stays home and take care of her home and her husband says what's happened to you she says yesterday i read an ayah in the quran I read the hadith from the Prophet وسلم, and it made me cry to think about my religion and I'm not doing that no more. And so he said, then I don't want you. You have become extreme. So she have now become stranger. Alhamdulillah. If he leave her, we ask Allah to give her another stranger. The Muslim neighbor the Muslim co-worker, the Muslim colleague, they are the ones that are blocking the way for people understanding Islam because people are getting confused. They are confusing Muslims with Islam. And part of us uncovering the treasure sometimes means moving Muslims out of the way. Now that the, the treasure is open and plain and clear and uncovered for anyone to see, I ask, are there any non-Muslims here tonight that would like to inherit this treasure? La ilaha illallah. One Islam Productions, an Islamic film studio established in Australia, is dedicated to producing films for all Muslims. Just some of the films by One Islam Productions. Children's programs, Islam for Me, We Remember Allah, Storytime and more. Educational films, Pray As You Have Seen Me Pray, Words, Ramadan, Renewal of Faith. Documentaries. We at One Islam Productions believe that Islam is precious and deserves to be presented in only the highest quality. Visit us at www.oneislam.net for more information. One Islam Productions, a film production company run by Muslims for Muslims.